Mm-hmm. Well, I think part of the discontent is that we don't really understand what happiness is. For many of us, we mistake happiness for pleasure. Um, and by pleasure, I mean pursuit of, of anything that brings some kind of material satisfaction, sensual satisfaction, whether that's um, food or, or some kind of pleasurable experience, money, um, and even things like achievement and success. And um, in a lot of ways, our world is telling us that's where we're going to find happiness. That's what all the marketing executives want us to think, that we will find happiness if we uh, purchase a certain good or achieve a certain status. And uh, we're getting all of these messages, and then for many people, they're wondering, why am I not achieving lasting fulfillment? Why am I still hungry for more? And what research is showing is that there are two kinds of happiness, one of which is uh, we call hedonic happiness, which is that um, more sensory pleasure, you could think of it as sex, drugs, and rock and roll, um, all the things uh, from, you know, from money to chocolate. Um, and in a sense, we do get a momentary pleasure from it, but it doesn't last very long, and we all know that. Um, just need to eat a piece of chocolate cake, it's very exciting at the beginning, but doesn't, you know, it's gone when it's gone. Um, but there is a source of much more lasting uh, happiness, which I would actually call fulfillment more than happiness, because it's much broader um, and it's much deeper. And um, the word that we use for that is eudaimonic happiness. It's a happiness born out of meaning, purpose, service, commitment, um, compassion, connection. It's something we can experience with a child, and it's something we can experience with um, an elderly person that we help across the street. It's something we can experience in spirituality. Um, it's something we can experience in a sense of purpose every day um, as, we, as we wake up and, and lead our life towards a greater goal, something greater than ourselves and um, just our own smaller pursuits of, of well-being. That's a really interesting question. So we actually ran a study with um, 500 people and asked them, what brings you the greatest fulfillment? And people do instinctively know what it is. It's connection with others and service. They, they, that's what most people answered as their top uh, form of fulfilling activity. We asked the question in a different way and said, uh, asked, if you only had three days left to live, what would you do? And again, overwhelmingly, people want to connect with others um, and, and, and feel that connection, that sense of service with others. So you're right that on an intuitive level, we already know what will bring us fulfillment. And the question is, well, why? Why are we pursuing, why are we looking in all the wrong places? Well, I think in a lot of ways, it is the messages we're receiving from society. Society is telling us to perform, to achieve, to stand out, to um, make sure we have enough money, uh, and when we have enough money, to get more money. Um, and we're constantly thinking that our happiness lies in our looks, um, in our degrees. So we're constantly running, uh, pursuing something, and yet um, we sometimes forget to just stop and, and really experience connection, which is where the greatest fulfillment is. So it's kind of a sad fact, but uh, one really telling research study showed that um, when you ask people how many individuals in your life do you feel close enough to, to share a personal problem with, the modal number um, is uh, zero. So the greatest um, percentage of people respond zero. That's over 25% of Americans. Um, so that's really troublesome because it shows that you know, one in four people that we meet does not have anyone to connect with. And so we're, we're seeing a problem here um, between where, where we will get our fundamental needs met and, and what's actually happening.